first to Greg Hunter. To Bob, uh, looking at, uh, at at Baylor, just give us your thoughts. First time you've seen them this year, so um, what are you looking at them? Oh well, they're they're terrific offensively, and I think they're they, they play really hard, and I think defensively, I think the their bigs have really really helped them. Vital's been, you know, he's been solid for them for. What is this now? I think it's his eighth year. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean they're they're veteran, you know. They 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 uh, they don't get rattled. They they play at a great pace, uh, and they're terrific at playing in space. Charles Montgomery, going off that, Coach Huggins, it's. When you look at their starting five, they had this, that great starting five, and then you go to their bench, and you have a player like Adam Flagler who comes off the bench and gives them solid minutes. How do you prepare? And Fran Fraschillo said they have eight starters. How do you prepare for a team like that that has that kind of depth and ability to go to its bench? Well, they're going to play against one. Uh, we've we've got a we've got at least eight too. So, you know, when you bring a a, a Taz Sherman off the bench, when you bring uh, Gabe off the bench. I mean, we bring Jordan off the bench or, or Deuce, whichever. I mean, that's, they got the same problem we got. Justin Jackson. Coach, uh, the one thing that stands out to me with Baylor is uh, their three-point shooting. And obviously it's, it's more than just one or two guys for them. Um, I think they average like 10 threes a game, but obviously, you know, they didn't shoot the ball that well against Kansas. Of course, you know, they're just coming back from a long break and everything, but, you know, have you ever scouted a team that, that shot the three ball uh, like, uh, like Baylor does and how much of a weapon is that uh, to try to defend? You know, Justin, I'd have to think, think a while to, to, to answer that question correctly. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it, it's a great weapon and they're going to bring a four man in who shoots it as well as the guards do. So, yeah, I mean, but we've got to guard them. I think we're well aware of that. Uh, we got to pick them up a little earlier and we got to do a really good job on ball screens. They're great at playing in space. I mean, they, they, uh, they do a great job of space in the floor and they're very effective in space. John Antonio. You went through this in January, what they're going through now coming off of a long break with COVID. And I, and I saw, I heard somewhere, that he said it takes about three games to really get back to, to, to where you were. Um, is that, you, you buy that? And, and what are some of the things that concern you when you come off COVID? What does that mean that that you you don't play as well for three games and then the fourth game you play really no, well? No, actually they say you hit your stride about the third game, uh, which would be their third game. This one, I should have known it'd work out that way for us. Um, <laughs> no, John, our situation totally different than theirs. You know, they they were what twenty days or something like that, close to twenty days. You know, we were uh, seven or eight. Somewhere in there, I think it was seven or eight, and and yeah. really the 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 biggest thing that happened to us was we had a guy who had lost about twenty pounds, and he wasn't obviously he wasn't the same, you know. Hey, now he's he's gained that back now, and he's playing really well again now. But um, I mean, I think that's 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 the biggest thing that that hit us. I don't, I I can't imagine what. Um, what they went through with 20 days. I know our guys that went absolutely crazy. They to day to day to went absolutely nuts. They'd been trying to sneak in a practice facility or they'd go out on a playground and shoot. They just, it would drive them insane to 20 days and not, not touch ball. You've talked a lot about game conditioning and, and, and there is a big component to that in there being in game shape, having your game legs 
getting that back, keeping that? Well, you can't go out and run on a track and get ready to, you know, get ready for a season. I mean, that we used to do that back in the old days. And um, I didn't like it much then. <laughs> I like it worse now. But no, it's, it, it, there's so much stopping and starting and running and sliding. And, you know, it's different muscles. It's, 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 you use, you use dag on there, all your muscles. So, yeah, I mean, you can run on a treadmill or you want to run on a treadmill. Now, cardiovascular wise, does it help you? Sure. But it, it doesn't, it doesn't in any way uh, mirror what happens running up and down the floor. You didn't like all that Marine training Jody did with you guys? No, I, I mean, I, I, the only the reason I liked it was because those other guys hated it so much <laughs> and I was hoping I'd get an advantage, you know? I mean, those other guys hated. Could you see Bake out there running on the track? Nah, nah, nah. Maurice, nah. No. No. Mo could run, though. Mo could run. Kevin Kinder. Coach, going back to the matchups and up and down the lineup a little bit, when you're substituting, how much of it is trying to match what they do for defensive purposes or to take advantage of something, you know, that you think you can offensively versus, you know, concentrating more on your combinations and what's worked best for you. Our substitutions really are more to get fresh legs in the game uh, more than anything else. Uh, I mean, there's, there are times I think when, Somebody will change lineups and we think we have a better matchup if we put, you know, whomever so-and-so in. But the majority of substitutions for us is to keep a fresh, to keep fresh legs on the floor. Mike Casaza. Morning, Bob. How are you? Good, Mike. Uh, I just got two for you. One, just how um how Deuce and I guess even Taz are doing with their, their lower halves. And then you mentioned their guard shooting and their bigs defensively for Baylor, but their backcourt is very good defensively. Um, that's, that seems to me just watching your offense against their defense in the backcourt seems like a pretty good matchup at this time of the year. Yeah, I, I think it is. I went back and watched our game last year and it was, it was a great game. Um, and it was, it was great matchups. And, and I would, assume that it'll be the same this time around. I mean, they, there's there's a lot and justifiably so said about their guards. Um, but our guards are pretty good too. And then how are um, Deuce and Taz doing? Are they doing? Yeah, they're doing fine. They're doing fine. I mean, we didn't do much yesterday uh, in terms of, you know, running up and down and, and, and playing. We, we got some shots and we, we looked at we looked at a lot of film and tried to have them understand uh, philosophically what we were trying to do. But, you know, I, I mean, you can't put it all into, into two days and play that game. And then you're so tired after that game, you can't play the next two. Back to John. Watching the Kansas game, what did Kansas do to beat Baylor, in your opinion? And did that in any way mirror how you guys beat them last year? Well, I think the big thing, the big thing that Kansas has that uh, most people don't have, I think there's, there's, a, there's a few other guys in our league, but McCormick is really yeah. good. And, and McCormick kind of takes away – uh, any drive to the basket. So if you if you uh, want to put pressure on the rim and kind of um, draw help and get people open that way, it's it's tough with them because they just kind of you can leave him on an island and he's fine, you know. And then there's not a lot of guys in our league that are that way, you know. He's not he's not what Sags was, but that's what we did with Sags, you know. We just push them to Sags and that's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're pushing everything to McCormick. And when you have a guy like that back there, you can, you can crowd the guy a little more, 
you're not you're not worried about getting beat off the bounce because you've got a guy back there who can erase all the mistakes. Derek's not quite like that. <laughs> Derek couldn't jump over the. Uh, <laughs> But one other thing here with, with Vital, you, you know, he's such a unique and different type of player. He's almost like a like a defensive end or a linebacker who can handle. He's so big and so thick. Um, what makes him so difficult? Well, I, I think he's he's got a great understanding how to play. I think too, he's a he's a very good passer. He's a very, very good passer. Uh, he, he keeps balls alive. Uh, he, he's not selfish, you know, he, he, he'll keep balls alive, get it back to the guys who can make shots. Uh, he's a lot like the guy we got really. Yeah. You like those guys. I mean, from your days going all the way back, you like to have guys like that on your team, don't you? I know you talked about when you got started at Akron, you wanted football players, that kind of, that kind of thing, or at least worked out that way that you had them. I want to get guys that like to win. And I think that's what, that's what vital is. He wants to win. I mean, I heard the story. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. I heard it just like everybody else did from, from TV that um, his high school coach called Scott and told Scott, Hey, I got this guy that now he's not going to score for you. You know, but he's going to do everything else. And Scott took him, and, and uh, it was a great take on Scott's part. Back to Greg. Bob, you've talked about this in in past years, but when you get to this point in the season, how much do you do you tell kids about where they are in terms of conference, you know, standings, NCA seedings? You know, how, how open are you with them about that? Uh, we've got a big uh, blackboard in the film room, and they they do it. We we we've got we've got guys uh, on our team that that know where we are and what has to happen and who's coming next. And so, so much so that they have their net ranking up there, but that's, that's our players. That's not, that's not the coaching staff. I, I, I think, you know, I think last year hit them really hard. You know, the, the, the idea that it could be taken away from you in a matter of seconds. I mean, we're all sitting there getting ready to go to shoot around and, and all of a sudden, you know, Shane comes down and said, you know, hey, it's over. No more basketball till next year. I mean, that hits you hard, man. Back to Justin. Hey, Coach, on uh, Jared Butler for Baylor, uh, you know, he's, he's kind of uh, scoring about what he did last year, but his assists are up, his shooting percentages are, are up. Um, I'm guessing a lot of people will kind of think he might be the player of the year in the Big 12. Just kind of wondering what, what you see in him. Has he changed his game at all this year at all? Well, first of all, I'm not ready to give him a player of the year. I think the guy that we have that's averaging a double-double and, and uh, has has dominated the league, I think, has is, uh, is, is got a pretty good shot as well. Sure. Um, but, no, I mean, he's 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 better. He's, he's, he's more mature. Um, you know, I think uh, it, it's 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 kind of amazing when you can put four guys on the floor like they do at times. That you put four guys on the floor, they're that unselfish. You know, they're they're, they're they they kind of look out for for each other. Uh, and he's the and he's the captain of that. You know, I think when your best player has those attributes, it tends to trickle down to the rest of your team. There's no further questions, John. You will be last. All right. Um, one on JB. Um, you've been really complimentary uh, of, of some of the things that he does uh, beyond what we normally see, shooting, things like that, like getting his hands on the ball and being active. Is that unusual for a player that young to be doing some of those things uh, this early in his career, particularly in this day and age? I think JD, uh, JB's blessed. He's, he, he's, he's blessed that his dad, Corey, was a, was a good player in his own right. Uh, studies basketball and spent an enormous amount of time working with JB. Um, so JB got 
you got, you know, it, I mean, I, I look at it kind of like what, what happened with me, you know, uh, did I, you could, dad? I, I couldn't screw anything up, you know, <laughs> well, I did screw things up, but I, I couldn't do it without getting caught. Yeah. And, and, um, I, I, I think, and, you know, and, and Corey spent, has spent an a, a enormous amount of time, just he and JB in the gym, you know, and, and smart enough to know when maybe let's bring somebody else in because he's tired of hearing the same voice. You know, my dad wouldn't do that because he's afraid he might have to pay somebody or something, you know, <laughs> as long as money wasn't involved. He might have done it. But, but know, Corey, Corey, Corey's been, Corey, I mean, uh, Corey has been uh, absolutely phenomenal. And, and I, I, I said this to Fran Frischella, you know, Corey and I were talking, JB came down here for a visit. We're, we're just either, it was either the first day of school or we were going to start school the next day. And, and I said to Corey, I said, you know, I understand what you're doing, you know, with going to the prep school and all that. And I think that's, I think that's great. And I think it's great that you, you know, you're going to get him another year, but wouldn't it be better to come here, play against the guys we have every day? go in a weight room with Sean Brown, you know, I, a lot of those prep schools don't even have weight rooms and have a guy who's, who's trained pros, you know, multiple yeah. times, wouldn't that be a better situation for him? And, and Corey said, well, you know, that's something to think about. And they called me the next morning and said, you know, can we get in school? You, you, I remember something Jamie Dixon said about your team, particularly as it related to Nate Adrian. It just was when he was on the floor, you were just better. You were just a better team. Is is that does JB have those type of attributes where you're just a better team when he's on the floor? Absolutely. But I think I think as time goes on, he'll be even better and better and better at it, like Nate got. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nate was without a question, you know, the, the he was the voice, but he wasn't that way as a freshman or a sophomore. When, He's when, a little ahead then. JB's a little ahead of that. Yeah, he is. Mm -hmm. Thanks. But you have to you have to understand the personalities Nate was dealing with too, though. You yeah. Know. Yeah. And Justin, you have the final question. Coach, I was going to kind of try to hold off on this, but but um, obviously you're closing in on uh, 900 wins. Uh, Roy got his uh, the other day. Uh, and, and more than 900, uh, two more after that, you, you'd be up there with, with, with Bob Knight. And obviously, I know that's probably a guy you respect very well and, and have, have coached against him, I think, three times, I think. Um, just kind of wondering, you know, I, I know the, the win totals, you, you, know, you try not to pay attention and, and that kind of stuff. But, uh, I mean, these are uh, numbers uh, that, you know, many, many great coaches, you know, haven't gotten this far just kind of wonder what, what, what your thoughts thoughts are here honestly Justin I don't I, I don't think about it I don't I don't really uh, pay any attention I mean it's hard you turn on TV and you know Roy's going for his 900 floor Roy and I are friends I'm happy for Roy uh, I, I have the utmost respect for coach Knight and when we we coach against each other more than three times but, is it more than three? Okay. Yeah. But, um, you know, and, and coach Knight grew up right up the road from, from, from where I was in Ohio. So, so I, you know, coach Knight was, was a legend, you know, and, 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 and I admire those guys and I, I appreciate those guys. I appreciate what those guys did for, for guys like me who came after them. And I would, I would hope that, um, that people would not look at not look at uh, guys like Roy and I uh, not in that light because those guys to me are are icons that th they're they're the Jerry West of coaches is what they are and and but hopefully that they they learn some things from from us and and could take some of you know what we've done over the course of what 35 40 years and and 
continue to make this game the greatest game you know that there is that's that's to me that's what's important i i'm not um i'm not all caught up on that other stuff I, right you know, and then i never have been did coach knight ever give you any uh good advice or any oh coach knight gave me a lot of advice yeah anything advice. particularly towards the end particularly towards you know towards towards the end of when he was coaching he gave me a lot of advice it was one of those hey come over here sit down i need to talk to you you know and it wasn't <laughs> like yes sir but i've been blessed man i've been blessed i spent a lot of time around al mcguire i, I yeah. spent a lot charlie spoon hour was charlie spoon hour was fantastic for me because he 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 kind of uh took the edge off you know uh, but I mean, I, I've, I've been blessed, man. I've been, I've coached against, I've coached, I've, I've spent a lot of time with, with, with Mike Krzyzewski. I spent time with, with the greatest coaches, you know, um, I was in Hawaii. We were playing. I get a call from the, from the front desk. He said, there's a guy down here who wants to talk to you. I said, who is it? He said, Pete Newell. I said, I'll be right there, <laughs> you know, and I've been blessed, man. I've been blessed to have the greatest minds uh, in basketball and I've been able to spend time with them. And, and I, I, I was with coach Iba. I'll tell you a real funny coach Iba story real quick. Sure. So I go to uh, Larry Gibson, very, very dear friend of mine, worked my dad's camp forever. And Larry was a junior college coach out in, uh, I don't even know where in the heck he was somewhere uh, in uh, Oklahoma. And, and, uh, he called me and he said, uh, what, what are you doing on whatever Wednesday? And I said, well, I got, you know, and he goes, well, tell him you can't do it. He's coach. I was coming in coach. I wanted to know if you were going to be there. I told him I would call you. And, uh, so long story short, I fly out to Miami, Oklahoma introduces me to coach Iba. I'm sitting talking to coach Iba the minute that practice started coach Iba turned his back to me and started watching practice. <laughs> he had note cards in his pocket. He was making notes the whole practice. <laughs> as soon as practice was over with, I mean, the minute practice, so he turned around and, and, and got right in the same conversation he was in like two and a half hours before. And we went to lunch and, and this is this, 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 I, it, 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 I mean, to this day, I get tickled by it. Um, so we're sitting there and the girl comes around, you know, uh, what would y'all like to drink? And, you know, and, and uh, uh, Larry said, uh, uh, sweet tea. And his assistant said, sweet tea. I said, unsweet tea. And coach Alb said, uh, he said, uh, I want some, uh, I want some bourbon and I don't want one of them there, uh, newspaper drinks. And she said, excuse me. He said, I don't want one of them their newspaper drinks. And she kind of mumbled something and went back. She came back and gave us the tea and gave, gave coach the, the glass and he looked at it. And he said, honey, I told you I didn't want one of them their newspaper drinks. And she said, sir, I don't know what that is. He said, if I can hold a news, I had a newspaper. He said, if I can hold a newspaper up, and see through this drink, you ain't put enough bourbon in it. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I, I tell you what, I laughed and, 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 you know, he, I just, I've been blessed, I guess is what I'm trying to tell you, man. Very, very few people my age uh, got to spend time with those, those kind of guys, you know, and, and I, 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 I treasure it. If I could and ask you one I'm sorry. If, if I could ask you one more with, with Coach Knight, um, obviously, uh, I mean, you guys' uh, philosophies, especially defensively, are, are, are pretty similar. Uh, you know, you, both of you guys are, were fired up guys on, on the sidelines, you know, that, that kind of thing. Were you ever worried about, um, you know, comparisons uh, to, to Coach Knight or, you know, any, you know, anything like that at all or – how, how could anybody be compared to coach Knight? Yeah. You know, I, no, I, I, I'm blessed. I mean, I, I, that's, that's the best thing, you know, that I can say to you is, is I'm blessed. I've been, I've been blessed to be around 
you know, the, the greats. I was, I was when, when we were uh, the pandemic thing and, and, and I went to my cabin and I, I got Al McGuire's book and started reading Al McGuire's book because I couldn't sleep. And I'm reading Al's book and I'm just, I'm sitting there like chuckling to myself at, you know, two two thirty in the morning about something that he had in a book that he said to me mm. and, and what a, you know, I, I, I just, I can't, um, I mean, I've been around the best coaches in the history of Ohio. I've been around, I've been around the great coaches in the history of basketball. So Hey, Hugs, I can't yeah, believe you 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 didn't mention Tark and uh, dividing up the pie. I spent a lot of time with Tark. <laughs> I spent a ton of time with Tark. You know, the greatest thing that happened to me, guys, was getting getting the Nike deal and and getting on the circuit where we did the clinics. And and uh, you know, I would I'd be the first one there, man. I was like the you know the dog sitting at the front row, sitting at the at the door, wanting to get in. And I, I'd go in there and I, I didn't say anything. I just sit there and I'm, I'm there with Louis Carnseca, Lou Olson, Tark. I mean, you name it. They're there. Everybody that you could think of, they're there. And, and just and sit there and listen to them talk and tell stories. And I mean, what a great deal. And I'm blessed. I mean, I was 20. I was in my 20s. You know, how many, how many guys my age are, are able to walk into a room like that with those, those kind of legends in there. And I just go sit in the corner and mind my own business. But I could tell you stories, some of the stuff that, you know, the stories that those guys told that were funnier and I'll get out. I mean, it, Val Vano, you know, I spent a lot of time with Jimmy V a lot of time, you know, it's blessed. That's the only way I can, I can put it. I've been blessed. I would say that time was probably evening time with Valvano, right? We had some nights, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Justin. Hey, you know, kind of going off that, Coach, uh, are there young coaches out there now, any that uh, come to mind that, you know, 20 years from now will one day be saying, you know, hey, when I was – in my thirties, I was in the room with coach Huggins and he, you know, I was blessed to be uh, around him. Uh, is there, are there any young guys in the business now that maybe you seek out or, or, or catches your eye, so to speak, I guess. You know, Justin, that it, it's sad, but I mean, the time that, you know, we're all together has diminished so much, um, you know, at the final four. Yeah. Yeah, I've run a lot of young coaches. Enjoy it a lot. Yeah. But, but uh, I mean, it's just our business has become, it, you know, it used to be all ball. It's not all ball now. You know, we, we got so many other things going on. I mean, how am I going to uh, meet aspiring young coaches when I'm doing the MAC events? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, a, it, it's just a different time. And I'm, uh, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm blessed to grow up at in, in the right time, the right era. And, and because I was the way I was, you know, everybody thought I was a little crazy and, and too high strung and all that. And, and to a degree, a lot of those guys kind of, they seek me out, you know, to just, to, just to like try to get inside my head a little bit, <laughs> which I, I mean, I feel blessed for. Anything else for Coach? Coach, appreciate your time. Thanks, everyone, for calling in. All right, guys.